We are going to be painting Firefly Willow. So this is the channel where we paint awesome things. Let's get down to business. Today we have two rules. The first rule is just to have fun, which I know none of you will have a problem with. And the second rule is no negativity. Not all of our paintings will look exactly like the example we have up in the corner, but that's okay. So just roll with whatever you make, own it. It's going to be yours, and mine is not going to look exactly like the example either. So we'll just have fun with what comes out. When you are painting today, uh, be mindful of your brushes. We don't want to leave our brushes out and let the paint dry on them. So when you're not painting, make sure that you keep your brushes in a cup of water so that they don't get crusty or anything like that. We want to save them as long as we can. So before we start, grab some music, get a snack, get comfortable, make sure you're not painting on mom's nice furniture, and we'll go ahead and get started. So let's see what we have today. If you ordered an art kit to go from us, you probably know that you have a pre-sketched canvas, your instructions, your paints, and your brushes, which I have mine up here. So what you will need to do is get a cup of water and a plate for a paint palette. Today I'll be following all of these instructions that are laid out in front of me and we'll just be going straight through them. If you don't have instructions, that's okay, just follow along. If you have your own paints at home, these will be the colors that you're going to need today. I have a white, a light green, a dark green, a brown, a very light yellow, and a dark blue. So if you're using your own supplies, just cut, try to color match the best that you can and follow along and have some fun. So you can see over on the left side of your screen, I'm up here, and you can also see the example painting and just another side view of what we'll be doing today. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. The first step here is the sky. So my directions say that I'm going to fill the top half of the sky, or the top two thirds of the sky, with blue, white, blue and white. So we're going to use those two colors and I'm just going to start by scooping these paints out onto my palette here. So I'll take a little bit of blue and then I'll clean my brush off and dip into the white. So I'm just going to mix these a little bit and the goal for this one here is to take the blue and keep it a little bit darker over on the right side of the canvas. So I want it to be light up here where the moon is going to be. But I'm just going to start by adding a little bit of water to my brush and doing some horizontal strokes back and forth. We want this to be kind of streaky so I'll take a big glob of blue here and just kind of spread that out. We don't want it to be completely uniform. This is just more of a flowy painting. And I'm only going to go two thirds of the way down my canvas. So I'll kind of mark my horizon line here and I won't go below that. So one thing to keep in mind, if you do have the art kit to go, I recommend not taking all of your paint out of the cup at once. Just use as much as you'll need and keep most of it unmixed because we'll be using that blue in the tree, in the grass, and the sky today. So you don't want to go through all of it too quickly. I'm just going to very carefully follow along my tree edge here. Some of you at home might not have a pre-sketched canvas and that's all right. But we're just going to start by filling in our sky. Then I'll take a little bit more white and pull that in from the left. Since the moon will be over here, it's going to be much brighter up in the top left corner. And I'll just pull that over gently into this side. And then being mindful of where your horizon line is, I'm just going to pull this across and then try to make them match up the best I can so I don't have two uneven horizons here. If they get a little bit off, that's all right because we'll come in with some green and paint over it and even it out a bit. I'll get dark again as I go down here to the bottom left of the sky 
and then pull in more white as I work my way up. Trying to keep my strokes mostly horizontal here. And I am using my larger of the two brushes. If you did order a kit, you got one of you got two brushes, and I'm using the largest one right now. The small one is for our fine details and our fireflies later, things like that. But for now we'll just use the large. Getting as close to the tree as I possibly can. Just going to fill in all of these areas. I don't want there to be any white canvas showing through where the sky is at this step. Take a little bit more blue from my cup. Carefully not to mix too much white into it. Another thing is, a lot of people like to paint the edges of their canvas. I won't for the sake of time today, but if you want your painting to look more complete and finished, I definitely recommend painting the sides of your canvas as well. And it is easiest to do this when you have these colors ready to go right in front of you. So if you're doing this at home, just continue your paint all the way over to the edge as you go across your canvas. I'm just going to smooth out some of these lines and blend it a little bit. You don't want it to be one solid color, so it's all right to keep some of those streaks in there where it's a little bit more dramatic and darker in some areas and lighter in others. I actually want my right side here to be even darker down in the corner, so I'm just going to wipe my brush off or clean my brush off a little bit, get some of that white out of the bristles, and then I'll come in with just blue and add that in. I'll just do a few strokes in there, getting as close to the edge of my tree as I can. Okay. It's also pretty useful to have a paper towel if you would like to just make sure all of the color is out of your brush, or most of it at least. Sometimes those colors can surprise you by coming out of the bristles. So there I have most of my paint out of my brush for the next step. So there we have our background all done. And the moon will be up right in this corner here. So all of this light area will just be the glow around the moon. If you'd like to pull some more lighter colors in there, you absolutely can. Just some more whites if you feel like your sky is a little bit too dark. That's completely up to you. So once we're done with the background, now we're going to add the stars. The reason we're doing the stars next is because this step can be a little bit messy if you choose to make it messy. So I'll show you two methods. If you're at home and you're in a pretty small space, you don't want to make a big mess, I recommend doing this first method I'm going to show. So all we're going to do is make a bunch of random small stars throughout the entire background. And it is okay that my background is a little bit wet still. I'm actually going to take a little bit of yellow and some white and put that on my palette. Just scoop some out of the cup. And now I'm going to make a soupy mix here. So let's uh, add some water make it a little bit thinner so my stars will be small. Now it'll blend really nicely. Okay, so I have a little bit of white and some yellow mixed. Like I mentioned, this is the cleaner method, so if you don't want to make a mess, this is what you want to do. You'll take the wrong end of your paintbrush here, and you'll just dot little stars all over the sky. So there's not really a rhyme or a reason. You don't want to follow a certain pattern if you want it to look like the example piece, but you just kind of make them random. Some are a little bit larger than others. Just make them varying sizes. And you can even add some that are just white or some that are just yellow. So 
Now, if you'd like to do the messy method, you can get more water in this mixture of yellow and white, make it pretty soupy. If your water is too dark and too blue, I recommend changing it out. I did grab a second cup of clean water here, so mine's ready to go. And I'll actually rinse my brush out with that instead, so I don't turn my stars green. So I'll add a lot of water, a little bit more paint, and you want this to be very soupy. This is the splatter method. I'm going to try to keep this as controlled and as small as possible. So by keeping my brush close to the canvas, that will minimize any mess that comes along with this method. So now my brush is all loaded up. You can probably see that it is just covered in paint. It's almost dripping. And I'm going to get very close to the canvas, putting my finger below the brush, and I'm just going to gently flick it downwards to flick some paint onto my canvas. So I don't have quite the right consistency there. I'm going to add a little bit more paint to my mixture that's a little too watery. So I'll just dot that, my paper towel. As you can see, if some of your stars get too large, you can very gently dot them up. And that's all right. So play around with the consistency a little bit. And I think I'm happy with this one. You can do a trial run on your palette as well. So all you want to do is just flick the paint down onto the canvas. It's kind of like a mean sibling chasing you around with you know, their toothbrush after they get it wet. And you just flick some small stars onto there, keep it very close to the canvas for a minimal mess. So my stars are mostly white right now. I think I'm going to come back in and add a little bit of yellow. You can see them popping up all over the place. I like this method because it adds a variety of stars and it really kind of looks like the Milky Way. If you stay in one area, you can make a lot of stars that are very small in like a little area. And if you add some more paint to your brush, you can make them a little bit bigger and spread them out a bit. So this really makes them look almost more realistic in a way. So you can do a little bit of both. If you like the splatter method and you want to dot some in, that's absolutely fine, which is what I'm going to do here. So I have quite a few splattered in now. And I'll come back in with white and yellow and just dot a few where I think they might be missing. The ones that I dot in are also a little bit larger than the splatter method. There we go. You can never have too many stars, so don't be afraid to add in a lot of this step. Really make the piece pop. So I'm adding some that are just pure white too. I like the look of those. Okay. So once you're done with the stars, now we're going to move on to the grass. We do that first so your stars don't end up covering your grass. So that's the reason behind it. So now I'll clean my same brush out really well, this larger brush. I'm going to uncap my greens. And this step calls for a light green, a dark green, and some white. So scoop that out to the side. And we're going to make a mixture of all three of these. Okay. I've got all of these colors on here, and I'll just mix them a little bit. I'm not going to take all of the three, all of the three globs and just smear them together. I'm just going to do the edge for now, and I'll show you why in just a second. So once I have an intermediate color, I'm going to go across the canvas all the way, just big horizontal strokes. Cover this. And then what you're going to do is pull in some of the other colors, some of these just pure white 
dark green or light green as you go. So I'm using this intermediate color kind of as a base, but then to add some variation in the grass, I'll just grab maybe a little bit of dark green and put a streak of that here and pull that into the colors. See how that adds such a difference and adds a little bit of definition to the grass? Okay. I'm going to even out my skyline here by covering some of this sky. Just do a little bit of my edge. And then maybe I want some white over here to lighten it up a bit. I'm going to keep it darker closer to the tree since I can make more of a shadow that way. But for now, I'll just put my little base coat down. These edges on the pre-sketch don't have to be perfect because when we pull down the leaves, they're really just going to drape all over the place. And it'll cover a lot of these little lines that are already drawn in. So don't worry about following that line exactly. The nice thing about acrylic is that it will usually cover whatever color you already have down as long as it's dry. Let's pull that across. I'm going to keep adding a little bit of white out by the edges, like I mentioned earlier. It's kind of light out here. It's a little bit lighter. Which would make sense. The moon's out here shining on it, and it's not blocked by the tree. I'll throw in a couple dark streaks, too, just for some variation. To a very rough trace of the branches. I'm going to make these ed edges a little bit jagged up here. So that's about where my branches will end. It's more of an estimate. They'll all be a little bit different, like I said before. But try to keep most of your strokes horizontal, just like this. So way back behind the tree, it'll be a bit lighter, since the moonlight would be hitting that grass. And I'll come back in with the dark right by the trunk here. If you find that your colors are blending too much, you can add this base coat, give it just a minute, let it dry for a little bit, be patient, and then come back in to add a little bit more of a dramatic difference in shades. My light green is liking to overpower the dark green, so it's really just eating that color and it's hard to see. So I'm going to try adding just solid dark green in some areas. Pretty hefty amount. So here we go, I've got a nice shadow in there. It pops. Keep that going just below the tree mostly. Okay. There we have our grass. There's a little bit of glare on the wet paint, so it make, makes it difficult to see. But as it dries, you guys will be able to see all of the colors a bit better. I'll just try to even out my horizon. Maybe I want some lighter areas too. Be a little bit more white. The trick is with the grass is to try to always pull these colors together just a little bit, blend them so it's subtle. And the way to do that is to just pull, like I'm adding white now, I'm just pulling that into the existing colors and just kind of letting it trail off instead of making it stop abruptly. Just let it slowly blend. Kind of let the paint do the work at this step. 
So you've got a little white there and it's just kind of slowly disappearing into my darker greens. Happy with that effect. I'd also like it to reach the edge of my canvas. There we go. Do the same on the other side, making sure I cover the edge or reach the edge with that. Okay. Remember to keep your brushes in the water when you don't have when you're not painting with them so we don't let the paint dry. Okay, so now we have to let all of this dry. This is a good time to kind of look at your stars, see if you need to add any more stars, step back from the painting a bit and just see maybe I need to add a little bit more green in this area, some dark green, some light green. Just look at your highlights and your shadows from a distance, that really helps a lot. It's easy to get caught up in the details when you're really close to the painting, so just I encourage you to take a step back. So my next step is the moon, and what we're going to do is use our smaller brush for this next piece. And we're going to mix colors similar to what we did for the stars. So it will be white and yellow, and I'm just going to freehand and paint the most circular shape I can for the moon up in the top left here like near this glow. So I'm going to go ahead and get mixing. I already have that color, but since acrylic dries so fast, it's already dried on my plate. So I'll just get ready for this next step. Take quite a bit of yellow and some white. Okay, so now I have these two colors mixed up in here. Might be a little bit yellow, too bright. So, come back in with my white. And that's about what I want. So, definitely wait until your background is completely dry for this step. Mine is very dry up in this left corner. I'm still going to give it a little bit of time since it's kind of tacky. Um, one trick that you can use is just grabbing a hair dryer. If you have a hair dryer in your bathroom, just quick run it over it. Um, it will dry the paint like that. Just put it on high speed, maybe keep it on a cooler temperature, hold it away and just go over the entire surface of the canvas and that will always dry out acrylic paints very quickly. Mine's just about ready, but not quite. Otherwise, if you don't have a hair dryer ready, you can take a plate, sometimes we fan our canvases with plates or even just blow on it and that will help facilitate the process a little bit. So, my sky actually in just those, you know, that minute of talking to you has dried already. So, I'm going to go ahead and start my moon. This doesn't have to be a perfect circle by any means. Since this is more of an abstracted piece that's very soft and flowy, it's alright if it's just a little bit off. I'm going to start small though, that's the goal. Or not the goal, but the initial step would be to start small because if you start with a very large moon and you don't like the shape of it, it tends to get bigger and bigger as you try to fix the edges. Another note is that the yellow that we send out is very easy to um, see through. So a way to fix that is to add more white and that makes it more opaque and it really covers the blue nicely if you just add a touch of white to it. So I'll just start by adding a circular shape up here. As you can tell, it's a pretty rough circle. It's not perfect by any means. To help yourself out a little bit, rest your pinky on the table behind your canvas. You can even turn your canvas. You can physically pick it up and turn it. Move it and do what you have to do. Just be careful not to bump any wet paint on your canvas here. And this might require a couple coats, just because the colors behind it are so dark. I'm going to make my moon vary a little bit in color, so I'm going to take 
mostly white in some areas. Maybe I want more white over here, and over here, and then just pure yellow in other spots, just to give it some depth. If you look at the moon through a telescope, it has all these ridges and craters in it, and it's not one solid color. So that kind of um, shows this. Okay. That moon's kind of wimpy and small, so I'm going to make it a little bigger. Like I said, start small. You can always make your moon bigger. I'll just go around the very edge of what I already have and use it as a guideline. Okay. So I'm happy with the start of my moon. If I find that when it dries, the paint's a little bit too thin, I'll just come back in, add a few more layers, good to go. But for now, I'm going to move on. I won't focus on it for too long. The next part of this is to add that little glow around the moon. So you can look up at the example, and there are those short little lines. We want to keep those very faint. Otherwise, they'll detract from the moon. So I'm going to have hardly any paint on my brush at all. To do this, I'll just take the colors I was already using, white and yellow, put some on my brush, and then I have my paper towel here that's actually already wet from drying my brush off so many times, and just lightly wipe some of the paint off. I don't want hardly any on my brush. And then I'll just come around the moon and paint different size lines. They're kind of curved. And I'm going to start closest to the moon and work my way out. So I have my first little circle surrounding it. And then I'll come out a little bit further and make them overlap unevenly, but trying to keep the two layers kind of equidistant from each other. Oh, look at that. There we go. A little bit of glow. It's very short, light strokes. Nothing too crazy, nothing too intricate. If these strokes get too dark, or too, not too dark, but too bright, and you're like, oh my gosh, it's taking over my sky, you can let it dry but dry completely, come back over with a dot of blue and just wipe some of it off or wipe some of it off with your brush, a clean brush, and then cover it with just a little touch of blue. However, I think you should just kind of roll with whatever glow comes out. So you mine got a little bit further than I was hoping to, but that's okay, I'll just extend the rest of it too. So it all matches up and is more symmetrical. Make a few of these more bright in the center. Okay. All right, so I'm happy with my glow. If you want to keep yours closer to your moon, you can. My moon is super bright on this uh, nice summer night, so it's got a really large glow around it. And then next, we're going to move on to the tree. So for this step, everything has to be completely dry. Your grass can't be wet at all, and neither can your sky because your tree might overlap a little bit of both colors. So, I'm going to try to get some air on my canvas here. Just let it dry out here. 
and give it a little fan. This is a great time to get some more snacks if you've run out. Or maybe change your water. If your water is getting too murky, like this first cup that I had, look how dark that is. It's already super dark and I don't want it to taint all my other colors. So I'm just going to um, swap out my water. So I'm keeping my paint brushes in this lighter cup now that I've only used for white and yellow to clean off my brush. All right, my paint is almost completely dry. So I'm going to go ahead and start mixing for the next step. I'm going to clean off my smaller brush. And to start the tree, we're just going to use dark blue and our dark green. So I'll take a scoop of this, dark blue, and a scoop of my dark green. And I'm going to mix both of those two really well, completely. I won't leave any on the edge this time. Okay. So there we have our beautiful dark color. It's a little bit more green than the sky and a little bit more blue than the grass. So it stands out on both. And all I'm going to do is start by following the shape of the upper part of the tree. So I'll just go along this edge here. And I have quite a bit of paint on here. It's a pretty generous amount. I want it to stay dark and not get too thin. And if these edges were uneven before, this is the time to smooth them out. Like so. I have four main humps for the tree here, and that's kind of what I'm trying to outline. Okay, so once I have that done, and I've just figured out where my edges are and cleaned up those up a bit, all I'm going to do is create long skinny strokes straight down that extend past the grass. So we're going to come down here, and I don't want there to be any white space. So what I mean by that is if you're pulling your branches down and you have space like that, little white area, we want that gone. So maybe pull another branch down there and just extend beyond it. Because once we fill this area in, it will be very difficult to go back in and fill those little areas. So just pay attention to that as you go along. Might need to mix some more green and blue here. The goal with this, to make this part successful, is to really alternate your branch lengths. Make it a bit more of a convincing tree. So those ones were pretty long, now I'm going to start shortening it up as I get closer to the trunk. And I'm running out of my color. Okay, so I'll just mix some more equal parts of both blue and green. So for this step, be careful not to cover too much of your trunk. You still want to see that it's there. And we'll use this beautiful brown color mixed with some blue to make it pop. So I'll leave quite a bit of mine exposed. That's why I made it come up more gradually in the center. I'm 
Maybe I'll have some branches that overlap a little bit more. So my leaves might hang right here and overlap with others that are right next to it, but a little shorter. And then maybe leave a larger gap between some of the others, like in here. Okay, so we have the start of our leaves completely filled in. And don't worry about this being too thin. We're going to come back in and do a few more coats with some other colors over the top. But for now, once you have all of that filled in and mapped out, we're going to not touch it and let it dry. And while that's drying, we can work on the tree trunk. So I'll clean off my brush really well, making sure that all of my colors out of my brush. You see I still have some green left. Really try to get all of that out of there. Okay, now I'm going to uncap my brown paint, burnt umber here. Take some of that. And I'm going to mix in some dark blue, just a little bit. So I want this to be mostly brown with just a hint of dark blue to deepen that color. So as you can see, I don't have very much blue at all. I'm going to add some more brown actually. Then take a little bit and mix that in for a subtle darkening effect. Okay, so I have this beautiful color that's ready to go on. Just going to cover up all my white spaces following my branch. Your roots, you want them to make you want to make them skinnier as you work your way out. So it'll be thickest up toward the trunk here and then just kind of fade off. And the trick with roots is that they're not just straight sticks. They kind of curve out and then they get wavy and fade out to the sides. So I'll just add a little bit of texture in here and make that thin out till it's almost not visible anymore. Because if you think about a, tr um, a tree trunk, it's just popping up from the roots below the ground. So you want to make it look like it's kind of disappearing into the grass. And gets very small at the end and just poof, disappears. So, I'm going to do the same. This one's going to come out toward me a little bit more. Same thing here, make it a little bit bumpier on the top of the branch and then it'll just sink away into the grass. The goal right now is just to fill in the trunk with one solid color and then we'll come back in and add some shadows and highlights. like that. Okay, so I have the kind of the groundwork laid for my trunk here. Now we have to let that dry. There's a lot of paint, 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 sit and dry. Wait, just like let it dry. We have to be very patient with this one since there's so many separate steps here. So I'll go back to fanning. So 
So while you guys are waiting and just fanning, if you're liking this video and you'd like to find more like it, you can go to patreon.com. Just type in patreon.com and then you can look up Creatively Uncorked. You can find our platform and then when you subscribe, you have access to tons of videos like this where you can just paint at your leisure. And maybe you want to order an art kit from us, which you absolutely can do, and we'll put together all of your paints and things and ship it out. Or you can just follow along with your own supplies at home. But either way, if you use Patreon, you get access to all of our videos to watch at your own leisure, whenever you like. Maybe you want to paint with friends and family. Don't forget to check out more art kits to go. They're pretty fun. And what else are we gonna do during this quarantine? This is a great time to just sit and paint. Okay. So like you might have noticed, I have a couple little spots where some of my paint splatter got out of control. All I have to do is come back in later with some green paint and we'll fill that in a bit. Okay, so my tree is drying pretty nicely up here. So once this is completely dry, which will be a few more minutes yet, I'm going to come in and all I'm going to do is really section off where I want my tree, um, where I want my branches to go. So this main center branch will kind of be at the forefront with these ones way back behind. And we're going to achieve that by starting to paint highlights on the outer branches first and work our way in. So I'm gonna say that again. We're going to paint our highlights on the outer branches first and work our way in. That's very important so it doesn't look like your tree is sinking inward. We want it to pop out. If you look at the example, you can kind of see that the lighter layers are on top of one another and we always want the one that's in the front to be painted last. So I'll definitely go ahead and demonstrate that for you and that'll make a bit more sense when we get painting but just a heads up before we put paint on canvas. Okay, mine's getting closer to being dry, so I'll go ahead and start mixing my next colors. We'll be using our small brush for this next step again. And what we're going to do is make these hanging branches kind of pop. And we'll need our dark green, our light green, plus a little bit of white. So we've actually already used this color. It's the exact same color we made for the grass. Go ahead and mix that up again, make a fresh batch. And I'll make a little bit of an intermediate color like we did before. This will be a quite a bit lighter than the branches that you already have, and that's all right. It might look like there's a huge difference between those two colors, but once we start adding in more brush strokes, it will start to look more natural. So don't panic when you put it on, because they will be very different. While the rest of this is drying, I'm going to come back in. My moon is getting a little bit thin now that it's drying. This is definitely an optional step, but if you think that your moon's a little bit sparse, come back in with just some white and yellow and fill in those areas. That's what I'll just do right now. All right, 
Okay, that's much better. And I can't see any of the blue through my moon anymore. So that's what I was shooting for there. And I might just brighten a couple more of these highlights around the moon since it'll be brighter closest to the moon and then fade out as we go. Okay, so now that my branches are mostly dry, I can start putting in some highlights. And we're not going to do the small ones at the forefront. If you look up to the top left of your screen, you'll see that there are two smaller branches that kind of make small rainbow shapes right here. We're not going to work on those yet. We're going to just work on the ones that are furthest back and the larger branch highlights. So I'll take that intermediate color that I've just mixed, add a little bit of water to my brush, and we're going to work in these mid-range colors with a, li a little bit of water, some green, and then just some downward strokes following this. So the bottom of my canvas is com completely dry, so I'm going to very gently rest my hand just on the edge of it because my trunk is not dry, so I'll be very careful. And you're going to start at the top and pull your way down. You don't want to extend all the way beyond these branches here. These are kind of like the ones that are in the back. They're creating the shadow. So we don't want to cover them completely. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'll start over on the left where this small ridge is and pull the paint down. Just like that. Very soft highlights, pretty subtle. They can vary a little bit. We mostly just want it to be brighter on the side that the moon light would be hitting. So I'll add a little bit of white right here since this side is closest to the moon. Put some more white in it and just follow my way down. I'm really just letting the paint taper off and kind of drag out at the bottom here. So notice how I'm not going too far to the right. I'm kind of stopping where this next hump will begin. And I want it to fade light to dark as I go to the center. So if you realize, mm, I went a little bit too light, just come back in with just dark green and maybe get a darker strip in here, just like that. So as you can see, it's a lot lighter on the left side and then gets darker as I scoot to the right. So that was the first big curve. The next one, I'm going to paint the highlight just inside of this dark edge. And you wanna start where the last hump begins. So my other one will kind of be like this big umbrella shape in the center. I want to avoid that edge. So I'll only go to right here. And pull this down. If it needs to be a little brighter, you can always come back in and add some white. That really makes it pop quick. So that's what I'll do here. Just throw some more white in. Okay, got a nice highlight. So these will just be the kind of the start. This is where it all begins. And I'll just keep working my way over. So like I said, we're not doing the small little ones first. That comes last. We're not doing those small branches in the front just yet. So instead of going straight to the center piece, I'm going to move over to the right side and work my way left, doing the exact same thing. Again. 
again, being mindful of where this other hump will start. I want to start my highlight after that edge. Like I said, the paint is a little bit difficult to see with that glare. So there you can see the highlights. But like I said, you'll be able to see it better once it starts to dry. Put some more white at the top edge. Okay. So now for the center, I'm going to just pull those colors down again, same thing, but I'm going to keep it a little bit more concentrated to the left side of it, and I'll show you why in just a second. The moonlight's hitting on the left side, and we want the highlight to be brightest right in this area here, and then it'll fade to darker over on the right side. Mine is still a little wet, so I'll just give it a fan for a second here. Okay, there we go. Now it's pretty dry. So just continuing on. I definitely recommend watching this step before you go on and do it right away, just since this is a little bit different than the other ones. So I'll just add the same green that I've been using, that light color, and a little bit of water since it's drying out. I'm going to start at the center and work my brush down. So one thing to note is that my other little pod, my little branch pod, is going to be right here. Kind of like a little rainbow shape, and I'm actually going to mark that. So to make a guideline for it, just take this light green, kind of mark where it's going to end, just to do a small little rainbow, and that'll help you decide where you're going to stop your highlights above it. So that's where that one will be. And then I'm also going to mark the other one. Since there's a second one up here, I'm going to kind of mark that area too, just like that. Now I have an idea of where those will need to be. Let's go ahead and drag this highlight down to that point. It's okay if you cover your guideline just a little bit. I'm always starting from the very top and working my way out to make that top of the tree look rounded. So it always starts and follows the edge as closely as it can. And a lot of my highlight will be right here down the middle. A little bit of green, white, and some water. The water helps it spread a lot. Okay. And it's not a bad idea to add some white. The moon will be reflecting on this side of the tree. And then it gets darker over on the right, so I won't make this quite as light. Tapers off just a little bit more. You can even take just some dark green 
and that'll add enough of a difference where it's still having a highlight, but it's not super bright. Okay. Now I'm just going to hop into those little areas here in the front. Same thing, just following the edge down, just mini. and extend these ones all the way to the edge of the tree. Since they're at the forefront, the foreground of the tree, I'm just gonna pull it all the way down. I'm going to add a little bit of white in here just to separate it even more. You can see now it pops quite a bit. So now that I'm kind of done with this step, I'm going to look at it and just see, oh, where else do I need to add some highlights? What else needs attention? So as you can tell, the front two little branches pop a lot more than the back ones at this point. And our next step is to come in and add some highlights with white and light green. So I'll just take light green and only, and some white here, mix that up. Need some more white. and make this a little bit lighter than the green you were just using. So that's what I used for my previous highlights and this is what I have now. Quite a bit lighter. And these will just be small highlights. They're not covering the entire branch system like we just were. This is just covering little areas. So I'll come in and add a highlight there. And again, you want very little paint on your brush for this step. You want to drag it from top to bottom. Again, just be careful where you rest your hand since you could potentially smudge your trunk. You're not careful. And adding a little water always helps at this step. So I want this to blend a little bit better. So all I did was cleaned off my brush, added just a small amount of water to it, and I'm dragging that over the colors now. There we go, now it pulled together nicely.
and if you find that your highlights get too light, you can come back in with that green that we were using previously, once this dries, and cover them up just a little bit. Really just finding a balance of all the colors. So you can see that highlight got pretty bright. One really quick trick to fix that is to just clean your brush off, leave only water on it, scribble the brush over it, and this only works if the colors below are dry. And then I'm just going to lightly dab it. So it pulled some of my paint off, and to fix that I'll just come back in with my light green, or my, sorry, my dark green that I originally used to make the branches. Just fill that area back in. Now I can go back over it and add highlights when that dries. It's really just going back and forth and finding the balance of your colors. And there we go. And then that one is covered up. So as you can see, if we look at this closely, my highlights are mostly on the left side and they fade and it gets darker and darker the further away we get from the moon. So my last little one here, now that I have all of these done, I'm going to use my lightest green. And looking at your example, you see that it's not just one large dome in the center. There's actually a very small intermediate one right in here. I'm going to add that by just painting this little rainbow shape up at the top, like so. And then I'll drag that one down too. And it's alright if this one gets fairly light, especially in the center of it. This will really separate it from the colors behind it and make it pop. It's okay to leave these colors a little bit streaky, just like we have been with the rest of the painting. As you can see, there's definitely some white streaks right next to some light green in all of these highlights. And that variation really just makes depth. Definitely don't be afraid to add a little bit more white in there than you think you need and push those highlights. Really separates it from that dark background.
Come back in and add a little bit more white. And right now I'm just using solid white, that's all. I didn't mix any green in here. I'm using very little paint on my brush, but it's effective in making that really bright highlight. If you add just a little bit of water, it'll spread it very nicely too, just like we have been in the past. Okay, so I think most of my highlights are done and now I'm going to move on to the shadows of the trunk. So all I'm going to do is just take a little bit of blue, dark blue mixed with green, and it's actually that color that we used to map out the original branch set. So all we're going to do is mix a little blue, a little bit of green, and you want just a small, small amount of paint on your brush for this. And I'm going to add a shadow on the side that is opposite the moon. So right in here, I'm going to add some shadows. This will be the darkest side of the tree, my right side of the tree. And then just a little bit to the top of this root that's going down into the ground. And then I'll add a little shadow right in here too on the back side of this root. It doesn't take much paint. Make sure you pull this paint all the way up into the branches too so it just doesn't just stop abruptly. Go. We have a nice little shadow, and it will be dark underneath the branches, so I'm going to take a little bit of that blue and green right up next to all of the leaves hanging down, pull it up like that. Okay. Just a very subtle shadow. So now we're on to the detail work. We're in the home stretch here. And I'd like to add some darker values to my grass. So what we need here is just dark green, and that's all, just dark green on its own. And I'm going to come in, and this is a good time to fix that little splatter spot that got out on my canvas. And I'll just put some strips of dark grass in here. I have very, very little paint on my brush. I'm also going to add some more dark green just below my tree, since it's casting a shadow down onto the ground. Go right up against the roots. And my shadow will be 
scribbled just beyond the trunk, down and to the right slightly, like this. Since the light's hitting from up here and the shadow's cast this way, I want most of it pushed down to the right. And it'll be a little bit more heavy on the right side. So as I work my way out, I want it to fade. I'll just kind of stretch off this way. And I will actually stop adding dark paint to my brush. And now I'll just add water and pull the shadow across the canvas. there are any areas that you think might need a little bit more paint, you can go ahead at this point. Maybe throw in some more green. I think it needs a little bit in here. Got sparse. I'm going to add these scribbly strokes, making sure they stay horizontal. and then just pull away from the tree. Alright, I'm just going to highlight the edge of my shadow here. So, I just added a small amount of light paint just around the edge to make some contrast and it makes it look like the shadow's just underneath the tree. And it's only along the very edge of it as you can see. Okay. So now I'm going to go back to the tree and revisit. And I want to make some yellow and white highlights. They almost look like individual leaves. So, taking the last little bit of my white paint here and some yellow, I'm going to make a mix that is mostly white. I'm hardly adding any yellow, guys. Just a slight tint. A little bit brighter than butter yellow. But there we go. So I have that. I'm going to take most of the paint off my brush. And then the final step will just be kind of spotting, dotting little um, leaves all the way down as we go. So I will show you what I mean by that. I'm going to do a small little streak in here of mostly yellow and white. And I want even less paint than that on my brush. I'm going to wipe some off. Just do a little streak to start it off. And then we're going to dot our way down just very carefully, small little leaves in there. So this will kind of look like little leaves, individual leaves are highlighted and are catching the sun's or the moonbeams. And I only want this on the side that is exposed to the moonlight. I'm not going to do this all over the tree. I've got some there. Then I'll go ahead and do the same thing here. Just very, very small, dainty little dots. They don't have to be super close either. They can be a little bit further apart. I'm almost doing it like two rows right next to each other. Just slightly offset. Just 
like that. I'll add a small little highlight right in here, just a fun little yellow highlight. The highlight for this one that's right up in the center of the dome is going to be more toward the middle of it. So I'll come in and I'll just do a couple strokes right down the middle. Add a little water. Okay, so that lightened it up quite a bit. Now I'll just come in with my individual leaves over the top. The highlight will be a bit more central on this one. I'll also have a couple leaves out to the left. in the middle. And I'm going to let them gradually fade as I go to the right. Okay, didn't forget about this little guy down here. Couple out on the side edge. And then to this one here. I'm going to add some water to stretch that color out since it got a little bit brighter than I was wanting it to. There you see, if you add just a little water, you can really pull the colors and stretch them. It's all about the layers in this painting. Just layering and layering. Throwing in my individual leaves, gently dotting. And then I'll just do a small highlight over on the right side, but I won't do any individual leaves on these ones since it's so far from the moonlight that it's not really catching as much light. Okay, and there we have our treat. So the very last thing to do now is just add in the fireflies. So we have our firefly willow, but no fireflies. So to finish this up, I'm going to clean off my small brush, and we're going to make very soft little circles as we go. And just have them randomly placed across the top of the canvas. It's almost like you're standing there looking out at the tree and they're right up next to you. So I'll use the right end of my brush this time. I'm not going to flip it over like we did for the stars. And I'm actually just going to paint in my fireflies so it's more controlled. Just make small little circles. I'm just using the very tip of my brush right now. I'm not really pushing all that hard. I've got quite a bit of paint so I don't have to um, push too, 
push down too hard on the canvas, it just kind of fills the space wherever it touches. And I'm just doing little circles, and it's okay if the edges aren't perfect. Um, one thing you can do to make it look a little bit softer is just to almost like bounce the paintbrush. It's called stippling. You're just stippling in the same area and just turning it as you go. And it makes this little rough edge that makes it look like the firefly is glowing. So take your time with this step and just be very patient. So I've got my three fireflies here. They can go wherever. They can cover the trunk, the sky, the tree branches, wherever you like. Try to keep them, um, don't make it too patterny. Try to keep them kind of random. So like this one's quite a bit bigger. It looks like it's closer to me. Maybe I'll do a tiny, tiny one over by the tree. Just twisting my brush as I go. This one might be a little bit bigger. Show that it's closer. Remember to just vary the sizes and have fun with it. It's kind of like they're all around you. Don't worry if one is quite a bit bigger than the others because it doesn't really matter. If you're standing out in a field of fireflies, some might be super close to you. It's more of just a perspective thing. So if you make the dots larger, it will just look like it's closer to the viewer. Like this one here. Looks like it's much closer than this guy way out here that's just floating off in the distance. Just add in a few more. And I'm pretty happy with how many fireflies I have right now. So the last thing to do when you are completely done is to sign it. Don't forget to sign your painting. If you're feeling very brave, you can sign your initials in the bottom right corner with your little brush, which I'll show you how to do here. Otherwise, I've seen people use Sharpies, um, or you can sign the back, too, if you don't want it to detract from your painting at all. But it's yours, so be proud of it and show it to everybody who wants to see what you're making. So right now, I'll just show you really quickly how to do your signature. I'm going to make mine pretty subtle in the corner. I don't want it to really pop in the grass too much, and I'm just going to make it slightly darker than the grass color already and I'm gonna practice on my plate. So, something that'll help your letters kind of glide is to add some water to the paint. And I'm going to practice just a little G for grace. Do it a few times just to make sure you've got it down. And that's about how big I want it on my canvas. Perfect, so I'll come back in. Add some water to my paint, thin it out, and then proudly sign my initials in the corner. Sometimes I think it's kind of fun to put the date on it somewhere, just so you can look back one day and go, oh, I did this back in 2020 or whatever, if you're kind of curious. 
but I recommend doing that on the back since it does take up a lot of space. There. And then once you have it signed, and it's very subtle, like you can hardly tell, you have finished your Firefly Willow. So, we will switch over and Thank you for painting with me today. I hope you had fun. If you want to find more videos by Creatively Uncorked, go to patreon.com. Just search Creatively Uncorked, and you can subscribe and get access to tons of videos you can follow at your leisure. So thanks for painting with me today. Bye, guys.